The exhibition that you see here, as um, it was said earlier, is part of a program of exhibitions and publications that acknowledges um, some of the leading contemporary craftspeople in Australia uh, who have had 30 plus years professional practice and who ha are not only just great artists and makers of work but have also given to the arts industry and this is some other this is the other side of Lola that if you read her stories you'll read about how she's worked on different art boards she worked for Taz Arts she teaches young women she takes them on camp she's been very and she fulfilled that requirement um, the thing about the exhibitions that we do at Object is that if I had to call it their style, they're design exhibitions. They're exhibitions of craft. This is not a museum designed exhibition. It has caused a bit of ruckus with the traditionalists because, the, as Caroline said, the way the necklaces are presented is in a very non-museum type of presentation. Right from the beginning, Lola and I had an idea that we wanted to make this um, an installation style exhibition and that if we could have had some form of body shape that were wearing the necklaces to show people what they looked like rather than the traditional in the tight round circles that you get them in the museums. Um, we wanted to do that but we had lots of restrictions uh, conservation wise to protect the shells that are very fragile uh, and that are touring for over four years around Australia. So we had a very clever designer, Stephen Goddard, who listened very, very closely to what Lola and I were saying, that we wanted it to be installation. We wanted to have that feeling that when people walked in and stood up looking at one of the long necklaces, they could imagine themselves wearing the necklace or they could be feeling as if they were talking to um, somebody who was wearing the necklace. And this is where the idea of the groupings come from. When you walk into the exhibition, the tall cases that house the long necklaces look like groups of people standing together wearing their necklaces. The shorter tripods with the cases on, they also have a connection to that the, um, Lola talks a lot about the tussocks of grass that are on the sand dunes and in around the water's edge and how they were used when they used to go mutton birding. They used to go and cut the grass tussocks and lay them on the floor. And it was one of the things that struck me each time I went to the beach with Lola were all these grasses everywhere. And so Stephen says that if you look at the shorter ones, and sort of reverse them, they're mimicking the grass tussocks that are there. So this exhibition has many, many, many layers in it. It's, it's not just an exhibition of the traditional necklaces. It's the contemporary work. It also tells a story. One thing I wanted as a curator to get across to people, again from the beginning, was the importance of this tradition that mainland Australians know very little of. You go to Tasmania and everybody knows about Lola Greeno, about shell collecting, about um, the stringing and what goes on at Flinders Island and around the country. But outside of there, uh, unless people have had some connection with Lola or, or a shell stringing person or have gone somewhere like the National Museum of Australia or the National Art Gallery or the Australian Museum and seen the necklaces there, they know really nothing about it. 